Hello, my name is um, Vincent van Gerven Oei. I am uh, a co-director of uh, Open Access, queer-led and scholar-led press, Functum Books. We're based here in sunny California in, uh, in Isla Vista. Um, Functum Books was founded in 2011 and we've been producing Open Access books now for over 10 years. Um, we are part, one of the founding members of the scholar Led Collective, and we are also uh, part of OESPA, in which I also am a board member. So we've been very active in the open access publishing scene for quite a while, and today we are going to do some open access myth busting. Um, I have here a box. Um, it's the only box I could find. It's a rather large box with a lot of myths. Um, but we're going to open the box and have a look which myth we are going to debunk today. Now let's see, this is of course anti-cat. Um, okay. I think I got one. I'm going to put this back. The cats are really concerned about this. <laughs> let's have a look. I want to hold my book. If I publish open access, I will not have a print copy of it. Well, dear anonymous uh, myth writer, um, that's a myth. Open access books do appear in print all the time. Um, the idea of open access, of course, is that the materials that are, uh, the scholarly materials that are funded by public money are actually available to the public. And this, I think, is common sense. What we pay for as taxpayers, uh, we should have access to. And everybody should access, have access to it. And I think if there's one thing that the pandemic, or one of the multiple things this pandemic has taught us, is that it is of vital importance that publicly funded research is available to the public. And the fact that it is not is a crime. Now, on to this whole print idea. Um, many open access publishers, including Punctum, um, that produce monographs, with journals it's a little bit different, but monograph publishers, they usually make uh, print copies of their open access books. In fact, I do not know of any open access publisher that does monographs that doesn't do any print copies. And they can still be beautifully designed because print technology is amazing. And to show you that, I um, brought a whole stack of books from our catalog. You see, they look like real books and they're all open access. And that means that, you know, the, um, the PDF of these books is open access. You can download them from our website. Uh, you can download them from OAPEN, from JSTOR, from Project Muse. But if you want, you can also go to the store uh, or to an online store and um, get the real print book, such as this one, which we recently published. And as you can see, the print quality uh, let's do it like this, is completely amazing. This is on par with offset printing. Um, the print technology that we use is called print on demand. And that is actually what is used by most open access publishers. And that's actually also the technology that is used for the back catalog, the backlist catalog of most of your, you know, trusted, uh, fancy uh, university and legacy publishers. Um, however, they will sell you a backlist title uh, for 40 bucks, and our books are usually around 20, 25 bucks. Um, and they're made with exactly the same technology on exactly the same machines, but exactly the same, the same two companies in the world that offer these types of services on a scale that is large enough. Um, this is black and white, as you can see. Uh, this is a matte cover. We prefer matte, but I think they also have like hardcover options and. Uh, glossy soft cover. Let me see if I can find something that has images in it. I think Donna Beth Ellers, uh, Donna Beth Ellers book, Anglo Saxonist Past, Post Saxon Futures, has some images, for example, here. They're black and white, but as you can see, these print perfectly well. Um, they're bound like this, so they're, I mean, they're not bound, they're glued. But you know, if you put them on the shelf, these will last 500 years. They will last much longer than your average PDF. So I, I think that, you know, with all of this, we can say this myth is busted. And um, 
I hope that you will all consider publishing open access because at the end of the day, it is the fairest and most equitable way of distributing knowledge to all mankind. And who doesn't want that?